Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sword Fighting School with John and Steven. We've been doing a lot of work on structure within the body. And today, what we'd like to talk about is the way that the grip of your hand on your weapon affects the structure of your shoulder and your elbow. Primarily your elbow and how it can protect or open up your elbow to a counter strike. You ready to go? Let's go. What we're going to talk about today is the way that you grip the side sword. So we're looking at the single-handed sword. I have a 17th century Italian broadsword called a Schiavona. John has a two-port Saxon hilt. And the grip that you use on both of these swords are very similar. When we're looking at these swords, you've got, can you bring yours up? Yes, sir. You've got a quillen inside the cage and a back quillen. He's got the quillen and the back quillen. This section right in here, we both have this, is called the ricasso. Our finger goes over the quillen in the ricasso, and that gives us a little extra control of the sword. This one also has a thumb ring, which his does not. However, his does have a fairly wide shelf on the quillen block, and that shelf can be used for the same idea as a thumb ring. When you are gripping this sword, can I use that one real quick? Yes, sir. Thank you. And I'll do it on this one because it's easier to see. You, when I say you put your finger in the ricasso, you don't put it over the quillen, you actually just rest it on the quillen. So if you look at this, you can see my finger is just barely in that corner. When I'm doing it with the Schiavona, it's the same thing. It's just barely touching that quillen. And what that does is that gives me this extended grip with my hand. I don't want to put the ricasso in the first joint of my hand, of my finger. I want it to just be over, just barely be touching the quillen. This does a couple things for me. One, it gives me greater mobility with my point. It allows me to open my hand. Secondly, it puts the edge in line with my forearm. Previously, we did a video on gripping the long sword and how the grip of the sword affects your elbow, wrist, and shoulder. This is true with this sword as well, with a single-handed cutting sword. The difference being, now I have a cage to protect the hand, and we can use the geometry of that cage, but I still need the edge in line with my forearm. The grip that we're gonna use on this sword, our primary grip is actually our middle finger. Can I borrow that sword again? Yes, sir. Thank you. So the primary grip is the middle finger. When I'm extended, I hold it tight with the pinky ring finger and the middle finger is still in contact. When I'm retracting this sword, I hold it with the index finger and thumb and the middle finger is still in contact with the handle. So everything in this sword rotates on the middle finger, but it moves from the index finger to thumb. And that's where this exercise comes in because your middle finger kind of stays stationary and your other fingers rotate around it. And that's going to allow me to open up and hit these different guards and then close my fingers for my cuts. So when I'm in with this Schiavona, I can open up. And if you look at the grip, my middle finger is still in contact, but my ring finger and middle and pinky really aren't doing much of anything at all right now. And then as I bring it around, I'm holding it with my middle finger, my thumb and my index finger. Then when I close it, now my thumb and index finger are free, but I'm really holding it with my pinky, ring finger, and middle finger. This grip 
allows us to not only provide stronger cuts, it also allows us to move through our guard positions better. If I put my finger around the ricasso, so it's in the first joint of my index finger, which is where almost everybody wants to initially hold their sword. What that does is that puts the edge of my sword and the quill ends inside my arm. It's no longer in line with the bone of my arm. If I put just my fingertip, that puts my edge in line with my forearm, which means if my opponent's cutting down at me with a reversal squalombrado and I'm just here, it just goes outside my shoulder. So you can see it's outside my shoulder. Go back to it again. If I put my index finger in there and he does that same cut, now I'm getting hit on the shoulder. Go back to it again. And so I'm not moving at all, but I'm getting hit. He's catching my flat, pushing my sword out of the way. And because my blade, my edge is in line with my armpit, the outside of my shoulder is exposed. Do it again. But if I put just my index finger, the tip of my finger on there, and he does that, my false edge catches it and it puts his sword outside my shoulder. Can we do that again a little closer? Yes, sir. So now my finger is around my quillen. He cuts and I get hit. Do it again. Go ahead and give me a little bit of a hit because I want my sword to move. Yeah, you can see my sword bobble around. Now, if I put just my fingertip, go and do it again. There's no more movement through my blade when he hit me and my shoulder's protected. Go ahead and do it again. And I'm not moving my arm at all. You are not, no. Go ahead. This grip protects my shoulder. When I extend, look how far it goes out. His blade goes out. But if I'm holding it like this, and I got hit, when I hit him, he still has control to close that line. So whether I'm accepting his blow or counterattacking into his blow, if I have the first joint of my index finger around the ricasso, I don't have the structural integrity of my edge and my grip to support my counterattack. He can just plow right through it. This also means that, go ahead and hold it with your index finger around there. Okay. And then go to a low hanging inside guard. <coughs> In this guard, I'm gonna hit your sword, okay? Got it. In this guard, I can go right oh. through and hit him. Yeah. You okay? I'm good. I'm gonna do it one more time, ready? Okay. And I can hit him. But if he moves just his, the tip of his index finger to there, make sure it's inside and mm -hmm. when he does that, it's so much stronger. We even got a spark off that one. Let yeah. me do it again. Now I'm gonna swing again. Sure. It's way stronger. I'm gonna hit you this time. Go ahead oh. and put your finger around it again. I'm gonna hit you. Got it. It's amazing that just having your index finger just barely caressing your quillen is structurally stronger than putting your finger around your quillen. Well, I could feel it in my <laughs> wrist the entire time. When I put my finger around my ricasso with that first digit, um, when each time you struck, my wrist folded, rolled inward and kept rolling each time you hit it, the, hard, the more structure you put behind your, your blow, the more you rolled it, which then rolled my elbow. Yeah, and then it also, so it rolled his, your wrist in this way mm -hmm. and this way because the elbow went up. Yep. There's no way you can stop his incoming attack. This will be true with descending blows or ascending blows. Yeah, that so, actually leads into why I get hit by Rodokios a lot actually in my wrist. Are you putting your finger around? I'm probably putting my finger around in that unconsciously in that space. My guess is you're trying to grip it and strengthen it. I think it. so. 
So the key to holding this sword with a cage, it's going to be different if I only have a straight quillin, but with a cage and a ricasso, I want to hold this angle. If I have a basket hilt, I'll do the same sort of grip, although I won't have the ability to put my finger over the quillin in a basket, but I'm still going to ma make main contact with my handle with my middle finger and then everything rotates between my pinky and my index finger. This also means, can I hit your sword? Yes, sir. Uh, you hold like your sword out like this. Give me a slight angle of the, ed so I don't go straight down on the edge. How's that? Yeah, that's good. So this is gonna be with my finger around the quillin. And mostly what I'm gonna do is just be dropping my sword. I'm gonna put a little behind it, but not a lot. Ready? Ready. One more time. You can see how much sword his sword moves. If I do it this way, ready? Ready. No more grip, no, uh, no more strength. Ready? Ready. Yeah. There's a huge difference. So this time, I want you to be strong. Got it. So I'm going back to my finger around the quillin. Ready? Ready. Again. Not a lot of movement. Not really. Now my finger just caressing it. Ready? Ready. Even when he's being strong. Oh, it's, it's almost the Go ahead and relax, moment. relax. The reason that happens is that when my finger is just barely caressing the quillin, my edge is in line with my forearm. Now everything is coming down on the target. If I have it here, I hit the target and the edge is actually in line inside my arm. So if you push on my, just push on my edge. Okay. You can see there's no support behind it. Relax, push on my edge. There's a lot more structure on that. It's still yielding because that's what the wrist does. But now it's supported and that's the key that we want. So what I want you to take away from this video is that our grip with our sword, the middle finger is always in contact with the handle. And we rotate between our fingers in this fashion. When uh, my point is retracted, my pinky and middle finger, or my pinky and my ring finger are open. When my point is extended, my thumb and my index finger are open. That also, you can see, gives me more fluidity through my wrist. So I want you to practice this grip. This will give you the ability to really control where your sword goes and how much support is behind your edge. This is going to be true with a simple cruciform hilt as well, especially if I put my finger around it. So if I have a simple cruciform hilt sword, knightly sword, and I start with my finger over the quillin like this, if I'm cutting down, can I hit your sword again? Just dropping it basically. One more time. But if I hold it in a hammer grip so that the quillin is not really in line with my wrist and my forearm, and I drop it down. Can you, you can, you can hear the difference too. Yeah. That versus that. Huge difference. And that's how I'm gonna be able to support my edge with my finger. And then if I get in tight, and this is in Fjord's manuscript as well, where the finger goes over the quillin. Can I hit your sword again? Mm -hmm. Now it really goes down. Yeah. And the nice thing about this grip, if I have a hazelnut pommel, it doesn't bite into my wrist. So that way I'm not hurting myself in the process of doing this.
Is there anything you'd like to add to this? Um, yeah, I will learn something wonderful right now, actually. I can use the shelf on my Quillens under my Wicasso as a thumb ring. Yes. So now I can actually be able to utilize when closing the top two fingers, that thumb ring to help the roll and keep that alignment. Nice. It used to be I'd have it down here, and when I was closing, I'd kind of roll inward or I'd roll over the outside just a tiny bit. But being able to utilize that little spacing, I can now keep far better alignment at all times. Good. And when you look at, can you hold this a moment? Yeah. When you look at the Quillen block, there's always going to be a shelf here. Sometimes in rapiers and later periods, it'll come to a little point. But there's always going to be a little shelf here. There has to be. Just because it needs to be wide enough to not break on any contact to the quillin. But that means that you can use that shelf to help with your thumb and guide it. I mean, if you look at this, that's exactly what I'm doing right there. It's just resting on my thumb. That means that when I cut around, I've got all the protection I need and the support. Yeah. So with that, thank you, we will close up. Thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe. And we'll see you the next video. All the best to you and yours. Thanks for joining us. Boom. Good to see you all. I'm conscious I've been doing the old, old piece there of pulling the trigger. Yeah. You can't pull the trigger. You got to relax. Yeah. That index you, finger. You pull the trigger coming up. Yes. Not going down. Not going down. Like... There was a the time there where we chatted about that little flick mm -hmm. of that finger. Nice. No, it's the flick of the pinky. Yeah. And now look, I'm in the proper alignment of long guard as it should be. Almost in um and in place. here. And when you're doing this, this quillin is protecting that elbow, and this quillin is protecting that hip. Yeah. So that makes way more sense if this guy does absolutely nothing when I'm descending. Yeah. Go ahead and do that again. So do that cut. Go ahead. Yeah. Way more comfortable. And I'm not cranking on my deltoid as much. Good. Which is not pinching that upper nerve. Nice. And then if you want to go to a, do a, a scroll mm -hmm. No. Go back. Just lift up your elbow. Aha. And now I'm in high guard. Or, do it again, go back, lift up your elbow and bend, bend your arm just slightly. Now you're in, low, in uh, high no. hanging inside, inside. outside guard. Bend your elbow, high hanging inside guard. Now just drop your elbow down to your ribs. And now pass. And there's your... And closing the fingers in that moment there puts me into the back to the squall and brother line. And, do that again. If you watch this, the whole piece. So he starts in an extended guard, long guard. He just lifts his elbow up, opens his pinky and his ring finger, maintaining contact with his middle finger. And now it's just resting on his index finger. He's in high hanging outside guard. The forte is in front of his sternum, bend the elbow. The forte is still in front of him. Now to bring his point around, drop the elbow down to the ribs and then past the ribs and then extend and the whole time he was protected by his edge. Go and do that again so we can see it in the video and just go ahead and roll, roll right through it. Protection the whole time. Yep. That means that even if you're counterattacked within your offensive action, your defense is built in because of your grip. And for me, a lot of that is only that one finger right there has been making all the difference. Awesome. Good job on that. Thank you, sir. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope that we were able to give you some good information for gripping your sword. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button below and hit the notification icon below. We have a lot of videos that we know you'll enjoy. So please... Subscribe and share our videos around.